Hello and welcome to Elevate Your with your host Natasha Player. Uh, this podcast is delighted to invite Lester Aloy McCollin Springer to the Under the Radar series. Welcome, Lester. How are you doing? Hi, Natasha. I'm, I'm very pleased, very pleased to be with you, trying to uh, help you to go through a little bit of my life as an artist and as a, as a person. Yeah, it's exciting. Can't wait for the conversation to start. Um, and so thank you for giving up your time to come along. Um, it's really, for me, it's really amazing to hear voices that are not necessarily heard. Um, and I'm really excited to expose your work and hear a lot more about the, the thinking and the insights behind your creativity as well. So I want to start though by, um, if you could just introduce yourself um, a little bit about your background. Okay. My name is Lester Eloy McCollin Springer. I'm Cuban. I was born and raised in the little village um, with a sugar factory called Manati in the province of Las Tunas, Cuba. I'm the oldest of three brothers. One, my, the one that follows me is a sociology and the youngest one is an artist, as, as myself, a visual artist. Um, my mom is a, is a nurse and my father is a mechanical engineer. Mm, I'm also an, an artist, a visual artist throughout my whole life since childhood. And my father of three beautiful children. Mm, lovely. It's lovely to hear that roundedness of your family. Great blessings that um, when I think about your family. Could you, um, you're from Cuba and very passionate about being a visual artist. Can you tell me a bit about the art scene there, just to set the context of your work? Well, Cuba as a country is, uh, is an island uh, with many blessings and many talented people in, in different areas. Uh, one of them is the art, in many of their let's say, branches like dancers, musicians, uh, excellent performer, per performance, uh, performers, and visual artists, and also sport people, among many other um, doctors, and some engineers, and um, people from the, um, sorry, it's quite hard to use, for me to translate sometimes mm. for the science from the uh, scientific uh, area. Okay, yeah. The so it's quite my country. Yes, it's quite prolific. So uh, I beg your pardon for any English uh, misuse. You're doing amazing. <laughs> Thank I you can't speak much. another language as fluently as you. So you know, don't worry about it. Describe it in different ways if you want to. Um, yeah, just feel relaxed and free. Okay, thanks. So. Um, I, 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 yeah. I was telling you that um, my country is quite a prolific um, island with a lot of talented people in different areas. That's the bottom line. So me being an, an artist, uh, it's no surprise. Uh, every single person in Cuba is talented in, in, mm. uh, in comes to, to art, except me. Everyone else is a pretty good dancer. <laughs> so, yes, I, I, and I really mean it. Most people are, uh, I would say they have ear for music. Mm. I don't play any instrument, but I, I do enjoy certain mm. type of music. Um, not all of them made in Cuba. I, I prefer the, other, um, the music done in other islands of the Caribbean. Okay. Like a reggae, calypso. But yeah, I, I have that influence at home through my cousin Jorge, which is a musician and also a visual artist. And he was the one I have to blame for my uh, motivation. He, he was, he's the one feeding me uh, since, since early age to carry on what I really wanted to be without conscience, of course, at, at the time. Hmm. So I, I can remember my mom taught me the colors, in a quite particular manner. <laughs> My mom is quite a straightforward woman, and some, it's hard sometimes, she's hard sometimes. So, but somehow after me learning the color at early age, I started a little bit develop, developing, developing yeah, yeah. The, the taste for drawing on textbooks and 
everywhere I, I had a chance to. And my mom talked to her hey, about what she was seeing uh, me doing. I already came along and bought me materials and put me in the right path. So in the early studies of art, till I went growing up and taking further studies until today. Hmm. Hmm. What an amazing mother you have to start you off as uh, well, you know? Um, yes, but I have to put everything on her. He was the one really taking the lead. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because um, he's a, a far-ranging artist as well, isn't he? He's, you know, he's a musician, but I've seen his work as a sculptor. Um, yeah, yeah. We did some work together on Highlight with the Emoja Arts Network, and um, it was amazing to see his sculpting work as well. Um, he works with wood. So that's interesting that he was feeding you. And how... I wonder what it is then, that even if you might be an engineer in Cuba, or, you know, you're saying so many people are artists or musically talented, dancers, what it is that, you know, that keeps them open to expressing themselves in that way. Because in some cultures, you know, to get up on the dance floor and join in is generally most people, majority of people don't want to do that, you know. So they're kind of shy and reserved. So I just wondered what, I'm not going to say what's in the food or, you know, is it the water or whatever, but just about the culture and society, you know, there's something there that keeps you open to exploring creativity, even if you're an engineer or a doctor, by the sounds of what you're saying. Uh, uh, well, how to start? Being an engineer or a doctor makes no difference. Those people also... Uh, uh, can be musician as many of them are and really good ones and mm -hmm. some of them even they drop the uh, university studies like um, being a doctor I mean they put the they graduate as, as, as doctors or engineers but they make a, a living out of art huh. so that, that really that happened kind of time in Cuba so I believe well in my time I'm 43 so by the time I was born and ra born and raised in Cuba, it was already the condition of uh, helping people with uh, vocation of art, creative people to, to go somewhere. Mm. So let's say my country created uh, an institution called uh, House of Culture. So in every municipality, and I'm talking about around 168 institutions like that, maybe more, because that's wow. the amount of municipalities in, in the country. So let's say in every town, may, mayor town, there's a house of culture, which means wow. it's an institution with the yeah. small department of uh, with provincial artists, musicians, um, dancers, performers, and depending on the situation, some writers. Hmm. So let's say you bring your children along from early, early age, and they get the basic. Mm. As, as that happened with me. So I went there out of nowhere and I was put in the hand of uh, an experienced um, teacher at the moment, at the, at the time. Um, and he just provided me with some skills. Mm. Nothing too complex, but a very um, rooted, um, basic things. So I get this, the... Um, basic knowledge from, from him. So through my early age, I was trying to develop those little things that he was putting in my uh, in myself. And then I went to um, vocational, like a higher levels, yeah. until I became a professional artist. So yeah. that's the way it's in Cuba. So some yeah. people, you can go, uh, you can be part of this institution from early age or even as an adult. You feel like you have the vocation of uh, dancing, you dance well, or you want to learn something, a particular type of dancing, you can go to this um, institution and talk to the to the teacher and say, okay, I'm interested in being part of whatever here. Yeah. So they will take you in. They might do uh, a dancing company, X, X type of dancing, yeah. African, well, African is, is, is quite diverse. So I just want to give you a bigger picture that, that diverse, like a traditional dancing from Cuba, uh, something more classical, depends. Yeah. And then after a time, you can we, um, we can confront all this knowledge in, in events in the province and then nationwide. Mm. So it's always a, a, um, 
a motivation factor, a promotional factor uh, when it comes to culture in my country. So it's, it's not possible to be Cuban and not being part of the culture. And also, because of the type of society that we are, uh, maybe it's the heat, I, we always put the blame on the heat. We have sun the whole time, and, and also we come always together. It's, 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 it's quite normal for us to, to gather in groups, to be always up and down in the street, or even at the workplace, yeah. sharing with uh, colleagues. So someone is always a, a joker or a singer, yeah. or someone doing uh, sketches. So that's the way we are in the country as, as, as a whole. I don't know if I... If I must to give you uh, an insight of how, yeah. how it is in Cuba when it comes to culture. It's fascinating. What's fascinating is that there's a really strong infrastructure from society, from the government. I'm sure some of that is commercial, but some of that is um, embedded in, like you say, the institutions. And there's an institution system that's set up to embed culture in those um, cities, towns, municipals, that are a rock that go across the whole country. Um, and that's really interesting, I think, in a sense of the investment in, in culture um, in, in Cuba, you know, and then those insights and uh, visuals that you create in a sense of people being outside, socializing a lot more in a different way. Because, you know, it's warm all the time, so people are out a lot more, you know, it's easier to be outside a lot more. So um, it draws people out, which means then that you know, there's that easier access of sharing and communicating and connecting with each other. Um, one thing I wanted to say before we move on is that, because you know, we said I said just speak in another way, speak in any language you want to. If you cannot find the word, <laughs> say it in Spanish. Do you know what I mean? Because you shouldn't have to just have to fit into this concept of language, you know, this framework of language, if you want to, and, it, and it's, you know, feel much more comfortable in a sense of speaking Spanish if you want to, or whatever language that you, you know, that I just want you to feel comfortable and relaxed. You are anyway, and you're coming across really lovely, but it's just, you know, I just wanted to say that really. So carrying on, um, so you, you know, you've really given this really vivid image of Cuba, growing up in Cuba, and your, um, your pathway through to become a professional artist. And now you find yourself in the UK. So I remember my cousin, she, she's, she's Swiss, Swiss, but she lived in Gambia for a long time. And um, she's been in Gambia for quite a while and then she came to the UK. And she was, it was very interesting the way she described it because she'd been in a sea of brown and black faces. Um, she, was, she came to Bournemouth uh, she came to different towns, she was walking around, going to the shops, and uh, she was like, it's like a sea of ghosts, you know? She had this visual image that, um, no disrespect to anybody, but just this visual image of, because it was just so different, you know, the colours, the textures, the smells, um, you know, everything was really different. So how was it for you uh, when you arrived in the UK? How long have you been here for? You know, what was that kind of initial landing and grounding yourself in the UK like? Well, uh, I have to give you a little bit of 10 year journey, yeah. almost 11 this, this, this year. Okay, um, you, generally speaking, you, it was challenging and still, even after this time in, in, in the UK, um, still a challenge, not because I'm not accepting what I'm seeing and living here in the best way, but to be accepted is is, is harder. But to to fit within the the culture, which is diverse. Um, well, in theory, is diverse. When it comes to culture, it's quite, in my, in my experience, quite rigid. So it's, it's quite hard to get through with something different. Mm. So it, it was just that. It's, it's, I feel up to now uh, hard. It's, it's, it's quite hard. Because back is in Cuba, that, that, yeah. I, I, I will explain to you. Hard? Okay, sorry, carry I, on. I will tell you. Living in Cuba, and surrounded by all this um, good side of sharing culture, because culture is everywhere, even within the same household. 
not in the same level, but everything is, is there. If you want to become an artist, the ways are there. You only need to have talent because the way is there. And you have to be, uh, you have you got to have a little bit of resistance because it's not an, an easy way. But I'm, I'm going back to Cuba to come here because this is important to understand. Back in Cuba, when I was looking at Europe, um, because everything in the art world, in, as, a, as a visual artist I received at school was from Europe, nothing from Africa, not, not even from Asia, uh, European. So I was like, wow, everything's in Europe. Wow, Europe, the knowledge, the everything, the Shakespeare, uh, the Henry Moore, wow, 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 everything was up. I came here, I was like, okay, where is everything China I was reading the books. I was, mm -hmm. it was, it was not really that way. So I was looking for something that I would not say that didn't exist, but not in the level I was having it back home. Yeah. So it's like, let's use the expression like a, uh, the green, the, the, the grass is always green on the other side. Yeah, yeah. So I was having that perception until I arrived arrive here and said, you know what? No, it's not that way. So it's, it's, there's much more diversity here, obviously much more people coming from every corner of the of the globe. But it's not that you see an, an experience or are welcome with all, all the diversity. So it's quite shocking to me. It was it's pretty hard to understand. But I'm learning. I'm just taking as it is and trying to, to fit in somehow without breaking my myself. Yeah, it's it's navigating, isn't it? And really interesting use of words. Um, how do you stay resilient? You know, and we'll we'll look at that in a little bit more detail. What I found as well is that, you know, when I've lived abroad and travelled abroad, it's like the UK is, it's this tiny island. I remember this um, Thai gentleman I was talking to and he said England is so small yet so big you know and it's it's like this tiny place that's been everywhere that's impacted the UK has you know influenced imp impacted all over the world and we understand what has gone on and the history behind that but when you actually come here and you realize the size of the physical island the 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 way you navigate through it's it's just so fascinating how it's perceived abroad and uh, how the UK is, is perceived abroad and how what life is actually like here you know because so many people want to come here um and that's another topic <laughs> yeah, isn't yeah it really uh, what it I is, want to is, do I want to move on to some of your artwork I think we should look at some of your artwork and it'll be lovely for you to unpack that and just talk us through the work is that okay yeah, can I go back a little bit? Yeah, I, uh, just, just to compliment, or not to compliment, just to add something to your comment. The one that you, you just made. Uh, most most people uh, say that, that England is a small island. Uh, and I really would like to know if that's real or you see it's an excuse to, to cover something because it's smaller than the UK is Cuba. Ah, ah. It's smaller than the UK is the whole Caribbean because Cuba is the biggest island of the Caribbean. Yeah. And no one can deny the power of reggae music, for instance, from Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. With about, what, four million people? Yeah. You, uh, excuse me. So for the, for the last 50 years, reggae music is well known all over the, mm. all, all over the globe. From where? For a tiny island. Calypso? Yeah. From pr probably bu half Burma. True, true. It's bigger than... Um, than Trinidad, probably Burma is bigger than Trinidad, hmm. and Calypso is well known everywhere. Yeah, the so carnival, it's not, it's, you know, carnival that comes out of there, and the way that carnival, the innovation the that's come out of there, the amount of people that go there just for the carnival, and um, the impact carnival, you know, Trinidadian carnival has had on on the world, and how it's influenced other people, other countries' carnivals. Even I think Trinidadian Carnival is going back to, um, to is going to African countries. So like Ghana, they've been looking at Carnival a lot more. Whether that's a UK Trinidadian and Ghanaian connection, um, there was a company I worked with, Rampage, who were based in in oh I was going to say Luton. I think they're Luton. Ah, oh, I forgot where they're based. <laughs> um, so they're not in London. So. Um, 
yeah, you know, that's interesting. The impact of Carnival, like you say, has come from that tiny, a tiny island that's smaller than Bournemouth. So the question is, it's about the size of the country, what makes the difference culturally wise? I don't think so. And I just gave you the point. Yeah, yeah. Are you, in my experience, okay, I'm not, I'm not holding the truth. I'm just holding my experience. Yeah. And I just give you the fact of size, which size, in this case, do not matter. I, um, what I can see is that the difference is not the size. It's about, let's say, the, the cultural policy of, of the country, what makes a difference. Hmm. So in England, my half a bigger in putting all the political areas, not in the culture. Hmm. However, countries like mine, with less hmm. economic uh, power, hmm. we develop everything else, the human resources instead. Yeah, yeah. So that is how I see it, and I gave you the point. How come, I mean, on a small, in a small island, like, like, island like, like in the Caribbean, we, the whole world knows what they do, at least culturally. Hmm. You, you don't have uh, material resources, but you have the human resources. And you exploit yeah. that. You develop that. Also, yeah. not, it's, not, it's not because it's institu institutionalized. It's just because it's part of our DNA. It's part of our yeah. culture. It's part of our heritage. So we just carry on as, as normal. It's not, it's not like a, we're producing artists. It's not like a, we, we, we are committed to, to create more uh, artists per capita. No, no, no. We're just born and we just do things, even without thinking of it. Yeah. So how we promote it is something different that not necessarily is, is uh, as I said to you earlier, instit institutionalized. So in England, it's everything. Everything is possible. But it's not, in my view, it's not the intention of, of the country to promote di uh, cultural diversity. Hmm. I believe, I can see, it's a limitation. I haven't tested, I haven't experienced yet the opposite. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's really interesting knowledge exchanges that can go on between um, either the artists that are living in the UK, you know, and the way that they work, um, because they're not always, um, they're kind of their income streams are very different. So they can they draw from commercial sector. Uh, so this is African Caribbean communities, artists that I know, they draw from the commercial sector as much as they draw from the public sector where they place themselves in their work. Um, they, they work on multifaceted, whether they're multifaceted artists or whether they're multifaceted in the way that they generate their um, profile. But I also think there's something globally to learn. So, you know, if you're thinking the way that you're depicting um, in Cuba, about the infrastructure of culture, um, I believe that um, it excites me to think about what the knowledge exchange is with the UK and not necessarily the UK leading on that, but other countries, for example, Cuba, Kenya, um, other African countries that are talking about what they're actually doing and how they're doing it and how Europe can learn from that. But let me look at your work and bring your work up. And, uh, and then we can talk a bit more about your work. Give me a minute while I just bring it up. Okay, so can you see one of your pieces? Would you like, yeah. to, would you like to talk about it, um, explain about it? That would be awesome, thank you. All right, that, that piece that you're showing is called O. Uh, it's the, the, the picture of uh, an African scene that I learned from, from someone. It's about a story between God and Goddess of Africa. So that particular piece that took me about six months in, uh, to, to reach to, the, to this finish point. It's a one-off piece, as I, as I call it. It doesn't belong to any collection, which is not my, my norm. I always do collections. But, um, one day I was listening to, to someone about the story of a goddess, uh, African goddess, uh, belonging to a, um, the Yoruba religion. So 
So it's Oshun, the god of the goddess of uh, love, sensuality. So let's say the highest level of uh, femininity mm. we can can describe her. So the story depicted in the in the in that piece is um, my vision of what happened in a village. Uh, it was a village where all the tools were disappearing. And no one knew why. Every single tool was going missing. So the elders of the of the village they they came together and said, "Listen, we we cannot keep losing every tool. Uh, we know that the person the person responsible for it is Ogun. I said person, but I'm talking I'm referring to another god. Okay, this is this is a story about god and goddess. So Ogun was another or is, is another uh, god." Uh, the god of uh, tools and w- weaponry, hmm. and uh, a god of a quite hard character, really what well, most pe- English people would call like a, a rude one, really hard to deal with. So he 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 was based on the, <laughs> in the forest. So I have to Very give you the light. story to, to, <laughs> yeah. to yeah. Well, I have to give you all this story to to. Um, to explain how I get to this uh, image and why the title of, of it. So the elders of the village, they call for all the goddess and gods to, to go for Ogun. So they talk to Yemaya, another god, the, another goddess, the goddess of, of the sea. And in some references, it's the mother of most of the Orichas or god and goddess. Uh, she failed. And many, many of the goddess, they try to go to the forest to go and look for Ogun. They failed, and nobody knew what to do. And at l- the last person who um, to appear, the last goddess to appear was um, Ochun, one of the youngest and they said the most beautiful representation of uh, of female, if you can call it, if we can name it that way. And she said, "Let me have a try." And everyone said, "Well, all the one before you, they failed." They said, "Let me have a try." So she went to the forest on her own making use of her movement, sexual movement, and enticing her body while she was dancing with honey until she found Ogun in the forest. And before Ogun reacted to uh, to mistreat her, she just touched Ogun with her hand full of honey in his lips, on his lips, and uh, made him follow her through the village and give back all the tools. So that's a pretty much the story behind that image. Mm. So what, why it's called um, O? If you can see, uh, the image is, is, is uh, represented by eight god and goddess. And the okay. female representation is, is Ochun, which color is yellow. However, because she's a goddess, I want to make um, a twist. I made a, I made a twist in the in the image, so I use a uh, most known uh, image of a religious person, a religious uh, a religious female, which is like a, a known uh-huh, way of yeah. dressing. Yeah. So, because in most culture or in some culture, the red is the color related to the sensuality, okay. love and sensuality. I use red, so I swap the yellow that is the color that belongs to to Oshun, to the red, just to give that twist. Yeah, so I twist that goddess, the color yeah. and uh, and um, give the holy look just by looking like a nun mm. and doing her uh, in in showing her nudity at, uh, to a certain extent. Also carrying in one of her arm on the, her arm the image of Ochu, of Ogun. The, the god of the tools, as the one in green, which, which color is green. Yeah. I made a scissor because it could be used any any tool. Could be a knife, a machete, could be a gun, could be anything. So I just use an scissor because I say it's, a, it's, a, it's an instrument anyway. Yeah. Uh, and then surrounding her, like um, owing her, like uh, yeah, in welcoming all, uh, her. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And then you have to. Um, to the right of, uh, of Oshun, in the top, Yemaya, which is color uh, yellow, uh, 
blue, I mean, yeah. with seven waves. So that's the goddess of, of the sea. Yeah. Below her, in green, you have the another the deity, which is um, Osain. Osain, and in his in that representation is full of uh, leaves because he also lives in the forest. He's, he's known as the god of herbs. Okay. So he knows everything about plants. He's the healer. He's the, yeah, he's a healer. Yeah. So he's like a kind of misty, misty um, god. Underneath is the grandma of the, of the god and goddess, which is, well, her name is Nana Mbakuye, and she's the, the, the goddess of rain, morning dew, uh -huh. and her number is 10. That's why she, you have 10 drops oh, okay. in her yeah. face. Yeah. Oh, below, below, you have um, one of the youngest god, uh, which, uh, whose name is um, Elegua. Elegua is, is a child, and he's the one responsible for human's luck. So he's the one that open or close mankind or humankind path. So it's up to him to give you fortune or take it away from you. So whatever he, the way he pleases is the, is the, okay. is the way we live our okay. life. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So his, his symbol is not the key. His symbol is a machete and an instrument made with a, with a particular branch of a tree, which like, it looks like a number one. So it's like a hook, a piece of a stick with a hook at the, at the tip on the same um, uh, branch. Yeah. So it's like a, he also used to, um, it's a symbol to open path. It's like a, he's living in the forest as well, or he walks through the forest, opening the grass or the males, yeah. the males yeah. and yeah. cut it with a machete. So open path. But because, it's, it's because of me being in England, and I made this work in England, a machete is quite aggressive to most viewers. So I made the soap for a key. Yeah, okay. More gentle and... I can get, I can put my, I can make my point across easier. And also I his color is red and black. Of, I see the key often in your work. Um, does that symbol carry on through? Is it normally a machete or something and then you've softened it? Or does the key represent different things in different series of your pictures, paintings? No, I used the key previously with the meaning I use here. It's the same, like a open or locking, yeah. a caring about what is important. Um, also questioning, it depends on the work, I question also what is important, to have a key or to have the right key. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a philosophical way of me asking myself and asking the world what is really important to have or, how is, or what is important in our life or within ourselves. Can I then that, go that on to, why, so, yeah, can I go on to the next pictures? Because uh, it'd be really yeah, yeah. good to see You've got a series of images there as well. So um, I'm sure there's more information on your website as well about those images. So this is part of a collection, isn't it? And so um, can you tell me about the collection and the work that you're presenting here? Yeah, this, this, these are pieces from the Canto de, de Resistencia, Resistant Chance collection. And that, it was a series of uh, acrylic on canvas, uh, medium-sized uh, pieces where I use as a, um, as a base the African continent. Uh -huh. So in every single piece of the collection, this is African continent in the background somehow, in the cha in, as a shape in, within yeah. the pieces. Yeah. And then I add my rastas or, and my female um, rastas as well. So my, my African people. Yeah. So this is this what represents this deep political collection. Females and it's the first time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Adam? Females are represented quite a lot in your work. Um, yeah, well. Is there a reason I, I, behind that or? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> but again, I have to go jump back and forth because to get to my work, I have to give a little bit of history of myself. Female are important in my work because it's a way for me as a person to, to, to pay respect to, to you, to pay respect to all the women uh, involved yeah, yeah. In, my, <laughs> in, my, in my life. With the, I have 
uh, all the experiences possible I, I can I, can, I could imagine through through women. Uh, as I say, I, I was born and raised with between them. I had a really strict mother. Uh, my grandmother were and great grandmother were not easier either. Um, and many other aunties and even neighbors, um, elders, el elder women that helped my mom um, to raise my brothers and myself. Mm -hmm. So in Cuba, we have a sense of community quite strong. So children could be raised in different household while parents are doing yeah. something. My mom was a single mom. So what she was doing her night shift, uh, my grandmother was not around um, or my grandparents were not around. She had to, to rely on someone. So those neighbors uh, living just next to each other, just they've been, we've been the family. So they've been the women in my life. So the best teaching, the best respect, the best love, everything pure is the memory I have from these women. Mm. Uh, and the way to pay tribute to all of these women in my, in my life is the reason why I use them as an image mm. in my work constantly. Beautiful. And because that was my motive for since early, early, early times, life blessed me with, out of my two children, two are female. So I have more reason to, to keep them as part of okay, my, yeah. of my representation. Yeah. yeah. And they are represented in my work with, always with servants. So Rasta oh. with the dreadlocks, male are with the dreadlocks down, female with servants. That's the difference between, between them. Uh -huh. And I was wanting to try to add something, just for comparison purposes. This is the this is the one-off collection where I didn't use a symbol that I I've been using for quite a while and represent. It's like um, my stamp somehow. Yeah. Uh, which is the use of houses. So the the piece I show you the show, that you did show before oh has yeah. houses. So that's why I wanted to go. To that one, but this one doesn't have houses as part of the of the pieces. Yeah, you use a lot of symbols in your work, don't you? So this, yeah, um, you're just using it in a different way. So it's really lovely to unpack that. I want, I'd love to move on to the next series. Yeah. Um, because these are really strong as well. Um, this is the Trapped Voices series. Can you? Yes, it's from the Trapped series collection. Yeah, you can really it was see a collection. facial images that you use. The symbols just of the face is really strong in a lot of your work and the shape that you use as well. Tell me about about these two pieces or the, the series Trapped Voices. Back again. This is a collection I started here in England. Okay. So it was. This is the first collection I started here. Uh, it took me quite a long time to, to conclude because of I was distracted doing doing other things in my personal life. So this is um, a collection that brought me to life here, that helped me promote my my myself as an artist. And at a certain time when I was started doing that collection, it helped it helped me to keep my head afloat. Why is that? One of the many reasons of uh, or differences between the Caribbean and England is, is the weather. Well, that's the most obvious. And you might laugh, but for me, uh, that I didn't understand why everything color-wise it was gray when, com when, came, when it comes to, to Europe and why everything is bright, vibrant when it comes to the Caribbean. I understood why what I, what I was living here. It's like, okay, it's the weather. It's cloudy and also people go with the weather. It's like mm. during cold time, people just go moody and that's reflecting in the work. My life was a bit gray at the time when I, was, when I started to the collection. And I said to myself, mm. I don't want to collapse with my, with my situation. So the way to keep my head afloat was to enhance in the color in my work, in that collection in particular. So it was like a a way to keep my emotions in balance. Mm. Also, in this collection, you can see houses. I, my work is the only one, as far as I am aware, world-wise, for the last 20 years, using houses like that mm. within the bodies. It's my yeah. time, it's my signature. Mm. So now I can tell you, now I can be loud and say, it. that's my signature. 
anyone else doing it might be copying me, but I don't. I, I I've been doing it for a long time, and uh, as I said to you, it's very important to me because uh, the houses and the green color in their bodies, instead of doing uh, black uh, black skins or something like that, they are symbols in my work. So everything in my work, yes, definitely has to be with meaning. I do not work for the sake of, uh, uh, I like to do this with no meaning, no, no. Everything I do, half a meaning. Mm. Philosophically or anything, but has to have a, a, a concept. So as a man born and raised in the Caribbean, I use the houses because we, I use the expression uh, within my work like a, a, that every person has a, half a mind of their own. Yeah. And I said to myself, well, it's not quite. We are we we pretend to make up our own mind, but we are in different ways a bit of others. So the others are the houses. So uh -huh. uh, let's say Lester Lester yeah. I am Lester, but Lester is not Lester Lester. Lester is Lester parents and the parents yeah. before. Lester yeah. is me, my parents and the culture from there, from here and from everywhere. So all those little things are like my own puzzle and then build Lester in a particular yeah. way. But instead of using like a, a puzzle figure, I use the houses as a community because the sense of, com of community and togetherness is quite important message for me to, to pass on. Yeah, it's really powerful, especially when you unpack it as well. It's what the houses represent is, you know, parts of a personality mm. or their spirituality, their DNA, their past life, this life, you know, the environment they grew up in all the different influences that make up that person and how you've made that your signature and the symbolism that you've used. These people that you've depicted, you know, they they almost bring, it's quite interesting when you talk about it because they, for me, they bring out a quite, I don't know, a, almost one is like tranquility, the male, but the female is kind of quite, I don't know, a bit lost or empty. I'm not sure. It's really interesting how, what we read into it. Um, and I'm just, and I, when you told me about the name of the series, The Trap Voices, I automatically um, thought about Black Lives Matter. You know, it's something that's really been quite prevalent in our lives for the past few weeks, for, the, for a long time, you know, um, and it's come to a head now, really, um, you know, with the recent and the ongoing issues of racial injustice that we're seeing in the U.S., and also the protesting that we're seeing in the UK for change. Um, how has, are these images relevant to that or how does Black Lives Matter impact on you? That's two big questions. But um, is there anything that you wanted to share? I just, when I think for me, when I heard the Traps voices that just, it just brought up Black Lives Matter for me. But um, I don't know if there's any relation to these images with Black Lives Matter or the impact of Black Lives Matter on your life and your creativity? Well, but again, it's hard for, to be to be small with the answer. Mm. Uh, the way, the reason why I created Black people only is just to pay homage to my ancestors, mm. all of them. So how Black Lives Matter influenced me or not, well, there's a link, Black people. But I do not subscribe fully to Black Lives Matter because my my concept of my, my my vision of that is that I am against everything that divides people any further, any even every little group that is created worldwide for me is is is, is a lost. It's a lost. Doesn't matter if it's if it's black life matter, because at the end of the day, every life matter. Every life. I'm black, but I'm a human being. I'm African. Uh, my life is, is, is not uh, less than any other. Any other is not better than mine. So every, every life matter. Uh, so I don't subscribe to, to, to even to the name, because by saying black life matter, you are, consciously or not, secluding every other one. And I cannot promote that. So no. Um, no, my work is just about togetherness. I just use the black um, physique 
black people African physique. That's yeah. all. Yeah. So, yeah, of course, I do f have sympathy for the noble causes of of Black Lives Matter, of all these um, protests uh, against uh, re racial discrimination, especially against African descent uh, people. But no, my work will, goes a little bit beyond that, I believe, from, from, from the perspective that I include everyone in, in my work. I just work uh, my, my pieces into humanity, not into any skin color in particular. I just represent black people because I'm a black person. This yeah. is what I know the most. This is my physique. This is what I am familiar with. Yeah. But not because I'm trying to promote anyone b above the other. Yeah. No, I just represent a human being in a female version, male version, as a human being. That's yeah, all. it's very complex and multi-layered, isn't it? And I think the more um, people talk about it, if they feel comfortable to, then it shows the, the, the variety, the diversity of views on Black Lives Matter and this whole thing of Black Lives Matter and All Lives Matter, you know, and the, um, it's just the, the, the measurement of space between, you know, we're talking about human beings here. So, you know, Black Lives do matter, but we have to make sure that Black Lives Matter to make sure that all lives can matter, you know? So it, it's, um, yeah, everybody has their view. And I think the more people talk about it openly, then we'll see that there is a variety of um, uh, ideologies about it and people's take and understanding of it and what feels right for them. And I think, you know, just because somebody is of brown skin, that's what they were born with. Um, you know, there are other parts of them as well, which is what you beautifully described. I think um, I've heard, yeah, that you make a lot of work and you can just go in the flow of creating a lot of work. And I don't think that is unusual for visual artists um, once you get into the flow of it. But for me, it really interests me in a sense of how artists, what tools, what do they draw from from themselves to create, to open up their creativity? How do they, um, what's the words that I use? How do they separate themselves from this physical body to enable, to channel creativity through them. They use their body as a vehicle to create, whether that's dance, whether that's um, painting, sculpting, um, you know, making music, but there is a channel that opens there. And how is that for you? What do you do? What rituals do you do? What practices do you have? Or, you know, you just get on and create. I'm fascinated by that. Can you, any insights? Uh... I'm not really sure. <laughs> I don't have a, I have, I don't have a, a magic formula for it. I just, I just work. I just work and I work a lot. But when I have the the conditions, not only my mm. uh, with materials, or because that's that's not this that's there's no excuse for that. But I have to be in the mood, really. I have to be in the mood, and I get everything from. All this pressure from life it doesn't have to be anything in particular. I could be just looking through the window and say, Wow, look at the houses. And suggest me something, and then I just go from that. Or just by talking to you, let's say, just making using a Black Life Matter as, as an argument and just your particular view on, on that, I could say, oh, Interesting. I didn't see um, Natasha's view that way. Ah, interesting. And then ideas, images come to my mind. Mm -hmm. I get just a piece of uh, paper and, and a pen, make a sketch. And, and the way I'm, I'm doing my sketches, just something quick sometimes, more ideas came about. And I have to do something quick, uh, developing just um, my vision after that conversation, after your comment. So that's the way I work. It doesn't have to be, I don't have any ritual. You have to be quiet and in the mood. So normally when I talk, after talking to people, close people, 
because I don't speak to everyone, I speak to, to close people. Uh, because I, myself, I keep the distance with most of the world somehow. Nothing in particular, just that I'm quite quiet. So unless I, I want to hear something interesting, even if I disagree with, with the person, I need serious talk. Mm. Because through that serious talk, then I can even improve my, my own knowledge, which is what I'm always seeking. And learning as I grow older, um, this is another opinion, this is another view. I have to say that I I'm, I'm, um, have some issue with the word opinion, because mm. opinions can destroy many things. Opinion mm -hmm. can help, opinion can destroy. So I, I, I try to avoid the word, that, that expression. I'm very careful with giving opinion. I either give an insight with, based on facts yeah. or, or say nothing, because an opinion can, can, can tip the balance. And I have experience uh, in many ways, positive, in a positive way and negative ways. Opinions, mm -mm, no. But yeah, that's the way. That's the way I, I do. I just watch a, a program, a documentary, and something might be there. With a book, something is there. Yeah. Nothing. I'm always creative. It's just that I can I don't have the 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 chance to achieve everything that comes through my mind. And mm. now I have to answer, give you to tell you something that took me back to the beginning, which is unfortunately for some people like me that we cannot make a a, a living now out of art. That's the reason why we are putting off so many uh, visions, so many ideas, so many hours, because yeah. that's the reality. So back to the Caribbean, everything is easy when it comes to art, but you cannot feed yourself by dancing or by doing a beautiful picture or a sculpture. You have to do something else to produce. So that reality hits a lot when you come here. Like, okay, I have plenty, I have Right now, in my room, I have over 100 pieces, all of them uh, with decent quality, full of concepts. Mm. But how to put it out there? When people are thinking of how to earn a penny, which is not a criticism, that we want to use the way to live, it's, it's quite hard. I have, so I have to, to stop my creativity sometimes and go back to, to earn the, the penny to pay them. Yeah, I don't really think you're alone. Yeah, I don't think you're alone on that. You, there's many artists that I either have, you know, another job um, that they, you know, that they do to pay the bills, but their their talent and their profession is in the creative industries. Um, I hope that this, you know, us doing this podcast will then, you know, you'll be able to use it for for your own needs. Um, and to be able to, you know, promote some kind of um, just, you know, to get to know Leicester a little bit more, you know, and that's, you know, one of my things. And obviously you want to sell more work and exhibit in galleries. You've also mentioned, um, if we can just talk briefly about it, not, it's just, um, I'd love to hear more, um, just about your social project that's close to your heart, Wingless Angel. It's a series of exhibitions to promote Cuban art in the UK and beyond. Um, could you just tell me, tell us the viewers a little bit more, the listeners, um, just a little bit more about your project, social project, Wingless Angel? Yeah, that's a problem. So Wingless Angel was a, um, an idea that, is, that came to me just one of those days at work, uh, listen, listening to a song, not related to the project, just a reggae song, but the melody took me to a place uh, where my children's image came came, a, came across. And mm. while the music was playing, uh, I was going back to my to my childhood. And I said, "Well, I want to do something to those children that do not have the chance to to reach what I get at the moment, to, to get as far as I." Belief I, I must to get, um, and I have to give thanks that my children are healthy children, mm. but still children. So because I feel love for them, I, I really managed to to understand what others explained me before I have my children, the meaning of that and the love, and I am not making a war against or saying anything against people that 
do not uh, have children of, of their own, okay? And just because love is, is everywhere and, well, anyway, the, the thing is about children, how to have this, this little uh, life hmm. to go forward on at least the time that they have on earth um, to be made with quality. So what I decided to, to do was like uh, put some of my, put my artwork in French, um, into the line and also some of my colleagues from the students, high uh, class artists, I believe, um, to this um, novel um, project. So the idea is to exhibit and sell our artwork anywhere. And 50% of the proceeds mm. goes to charities attending children with terminal illnesses and chronic diseases. Has to be that, nothing else. Yeah. Because those are the children with less chances to, yeah. to live. And is this in Cuba? Is that in Cuba? The the charities. Cuba and the, U and the yeah. No, the, the, there's not, in Cuba. There's no charities. Charities that doesn't that doesn't exist in Cuba as part of my work. Okay. However, there are many. Pediatric yeah. institutions, hospitals. Yeah. So yeah. anywhere is used, it doesn't really matter to me. But of course, I'm based here, I'm on Cuba, so my idea is to start here in the UK somewhere, maybe local, doesn't really matter. Yeah. A life that we can, a life that we can help save or, or prolong is, yeah. is, is enough. Yeah. It's the, so, tar it's the uh, thought of giving, isn't it, you know? And exactly. At the same time, exposing uh, other Cuban artists, you know, and using Correct. your connection. I'm a real believer in bringing people with me, you know, um, so we can rise together, you know. Um, that 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 is the that's the intention of of the project. So as I said to you, 50% of the proceeds goes to the children. On the district, on the hospital charities doesn't really matter to me. Yeah, yeah. So as long as it goes to children with uh, chronic diseases and terminal illnesses. Uh, is enough. Whatever is, is used for, it's is all right. And the other 50% is just to reinvest in the project, which means buy materials, uh, to pay for promotion, to hire spaces to, to exhibit, travel back and forth from Cuba with, with work, and if possible, to bring colleagues uh, from Cuba so they can, you can see all, all their face, not only my artwork. So far, obviously, it's, it's, it's something that's still um, new. I'm still working on it. But I already um, made some income selling my artwork. Hmm. So to, to keep things flowing, I went to Cuba last last September to engage with some of my colleagues from from Las Tunas, the city from where I, I was uh, develop, developing myself as an artist hmm. to bring into the I mean to to make the first the, the first step to, to build the project. So it's gonna be more diverse. Uh, Type of work, not only mine. Even though yeah. I, I I can be diverse in my creativity with my creations, so it will be all the other people. Yeah. And who knows if, if well, I would say if when the friend get older, grow older, then I I'm happy to include artists from any other place. Doesn't really matter. Yeah. It needs just to grow all together and, and to to flow, give to the children, reinvest in the program in, in the press. So yeah, that's it. And we all become known and, and do better as an individual than in another yeah. area. So it's a great opportunity to collaborate. And, you know, so for anybody that wants to um, find out a lot more about you or reach out for your project, your social project, Wingless Angel, um, they can contact you on IG, on Instagram. What's your name? How do they find you on Instagram, Lester? It's pretty Cuba. That's Spring my name. That, yeah, Springer Cuba. That's that's the way it's gonna be found most places. Awesome. My page on Facebook, uh, my Instagram, Twitter, and all the information about Willis Angel and also about my artwork. Yeah. See my webpage, which is www.springercuba.co.uk. We've come to the end of our interview. Um, I'm sorry to say it's been fascinating. I always love it when I've invited you to talk, when you start expanding and talking more about the work in detail and your insights into life, the conversations that we've had uh, as we've got to know each other. 
Um, it's always, you know, it's always a pleasure to have a chat with you. I always learn something new. So thank you very much, Lester, for sharing oh, your thank time. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be a bit um, talkative. This is not me, really. <laughs>